The next talk is by Juan Luis Cano, a fine aerospace engineer. Almost. Now, almost, N not yet. Oh. I will explain that in a minute. Oh. We'll, have a, we'll have a long talk the, during the lunch. Yeah, too much Python, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and he will talk, maybe some of you have suffered the packaging problems in Python. It's a difficult topic. And uh, uh, Juan Luis will try to explain how to solve that with Conda. So give a warm applause to Juan Luis. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you all of you for coming. Thank you for the organization and for the wine tasting yesterday for the speakers because it was great. <laughs> Lots of fun. Uh, so the title of my talk is The Build System We Always Needed But Never Deserved. I didn't know how to phrase this because uh, it's very easy you know, to start saying that everything is broken and nothing works and now nobody knows how to do his job. But the reality is that many people have put a lot of hours of their spare time in building these systems, even if some of them don't work very properly. So I'm trying to not be too dismissive, not too negative. Don't take any of what I'm going to say at the beginning too personal. But I'm trying to also to make a, lot, uh, a bit of fun of the current situation, because I think that it's, it deserves it. So let's begin with it. Uh, I'm going to uh, outline a, very, a little bit uh, what we're going to talk about. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about the motivation, what brought us here, why are we in need of using Conda and Conda packages, and then we're going to outline how can we build our first Conda package, uh, the very simple one with just Python, and then give some, a couple of more advanced tricks on how can we use other languages, uh, make the package more useful for different platforms and stuff like that. And then I'm going to talk about, uh, very briefly, about a new community effort that Christine already mentioned in her talk, which is Conda Forge. And I'm going to also talk about the limitations of Conda, because uh, not everything is perfect. There's no silver bullet, as you already know. So I think it's fair to say a couple of quirks that still exist uh, before we can uh, work perfectly with this system. And then I'm jumping to the conclusion, so I'm finishing the talk. I don't know uh, if the organization is going to allow me for a couple of minutes to talk about the PyCon Spain that is upcoming at the end of the year, but anyway, we'll talk about it later because I'm not going to uh, speak for too long, I hope. Well, this is me, this stupid guy doing silly things somewhere. I'm an almost aerospace engineer, uh, studying at Politecnica de Madrid. I used to work at GMB, which is a sponsor of the, of the conference, but now I work at Indicent, which is a, a software company for working for, uh, for, the, for BVA, which is also a, a sponsor. And now I work with lots of Python, while before that I was working more with Fortran and stuff like that. <laughs> and I, I usually write at Pybonacci, which is a blog in Spanish language about scientific computing. Uh, for now with Python, and I also the chair and will enable the dictator for life of the Python Spain Nonprofit Association. And I'm also the co-creator with my friend Alex of the AeroPython group, which is not related to the Lorena Barba course in the University of Washington, but is uh, some initiative what we've been carrying on to teach uh, aerospace engineers to use open tools and, and especially Python. And when time permits, which is rare, I also write some open source Python code, especially have a personal project which involves interplanetary trajectories. Well, I've been giving talks about scientific Python for about three years already, and I always write this almost big thing over there. I've been an almost aerospace engineer for quite a few years already, and it's not a funny situation, especially with my parents, but you might wonder what I've been doing for, this, for these years, and now I'm going to explain some of it, but it boils down to fighting with compilers. Okay, so what brought us here, which I also wanted to call the sad state of scientific software? You might already know that the scientific Python community has had many problems with the packaging ecosystem. And in fact, the thing is that combining C extensions and Fortran extensions with Python code is not, uh, it, it used to be very difficult. 
and almost impossible to make uh, work on Windows, for instance. And actually, in a 2014 conference, Guido Van Rossum told the scientific Python developers to fix the problems themselves, because there was not much interest in the core Python community. So yeah, for many years, the Windows packages uh, made by Christoph Golk, with I'm sure many of you already know, were the only way to install Python on a, on a Windows machine before Anaconda and other Python distributions came. And do you, does anybody know the Sage project here? OK, some of you. Well, for those of you do, who don't know, Sage is, is a Python project uh, that involves a lot of mathematical libraries that mixes a lot of open source projects to develop a, an alternative to MATLAB, Mathematica. That is the philosophy of the project. And right now, the situation is that they, uh, they just ship the whole dependencies in a, in a big blob, which is several gigabytes in size. And well, needless to say that it's impossible to make it work in Windows, that the different versions, you have to pin very specific ones to make it work. And actually, they started a, a, a company providing Sage as a service to free the people from these stunning problems. And actually, this is not only a problem in the you know, in the scientific compiled uh, world, because, well, how many of you write Python for a living or for fun or whatever? OK, how many of you can write a setup.py without looking on Stack Overflow? <laughs> OK, it's very difficult, right? And it's not only the compiled packages, as I told, but also the distributing Python libraries is quite difficult. Uh, one package that you may not know, which is a bit more uh, specific, which is PitC, uh, it's a set of tools uh, intended to solve partial differential equations. Well, right now, they also depend on many uh, third-party libraries. But many of these libraries don't have a, an open repository, for instance, or they receive patches uh, with open bugs or memory problems or whatever, and they don't fix them. So they, the PitC guys are forced to ship their own forks of these third-party versions because the upstream maintainers refuse to, to make the work. So well, this kind of situation has made me fight for many months to, to carry my final, my final university project, which in the end, it boils down to try to compile all these things in a more or less portable way. And specifically, I'm using the Dolphin library, which is also a uh, library intended to solve partial division equations for, with the um, um, finite element method, which has all these problems because it depends on PETC and many other different packages. So at some point, I was like this, please make it stop. And these are the reasons because that brought us here, that portability is hard unless you stick to pure Python, and that properly distributing software libraries is very hard because if you want to do it right, you have to take into account many operating systems. You have to take into account that not everything is on root locations. So this tends to create a lot of problems unless you ship uh, some alternatives, which I will mention right now. The result is that we just uh, think that if it works in my machine, then it's right. But it's not. Because this is not only a matter of producing some results or developing some application. And when we are talking about science, for instance, it's also a matter of trying to justify our results and allowing our peers to reproduce our results. And it's not very clear, for instance, that shipping a virtual machine or a container is the solution for allowing our peers to reproduce our results. Because as uh, Titus Brown said in this article that I link here, just because you can provide a virtual, ma a virtual machine doesn't mean that anyone other than you can install your software. So instead of just shipping your software, you have to ship a big container around it to allow other people to work on it. And actually, the, there are other communities that are feeling these problems too. And in particular, this article about Eve, uh, from Eve, sorry, which is a very well-known developer in the Python web development community, already highlighted that if you have any dependency which is in a compiled language and you want to install it in a different location that is not the one by default, then basically you are fucked. 
because nobody provides the, the correct scripts to build this in a proper way. So what are the alternatives? Well, I'm going to talk about Conda build. Okay, so let's install it first. And as you can see here, you can install it by Conda, and that's it. And the thing is that Conda packages is, are just a binary format that it works with the Conda package manager. And to begin with, we can create a very basic package, starting with one that is already available on PyP. And this is one of the first things that I wanted to highlight because Conda is not directly compatible with the PyP packages, so you have to make a conversion in the, in the middle that I am going to explain here. And using, using Conda Skeleton, which is this command over here, you can translate these PyP packages, and it's going to produce a Conda recipe. And what is a Conda recipe? Basically, it's made of these three files over here, which is the most basic form of a Conda recipe, and it's just a uh, a file which contains all the metadata for creating the packages, and also a couple of scripts for Unix-like systems and Windows to actually install the, our software. In particular, the meta.yaml, uh, it contains all the metadata in a declarative form uh, of the package, and this is a very important distinction from what we're used to when we write, for example, a setup.py, because we have the function setup, we, uh, where we declare some uh, description, some metadata in a declarative form, but the rest of the setup.py can contain any logic because it's just a, a Python module. And this tends to create very complex installation processes, and in the end, everybody makes their own process, so it's not very clear what's the good way to proceed. So here, in this way, uh, you can declare some, some sections, like where is your package come from, what's the name, the version, uh, what are the requirements in install time and in build time, which is uh, very, very important. Also some tests. I will talk uh, a bit later of what's the process to build a Conda package and well, some description and information about the license and stuff like that. So this is more or less how a meta.yaml looks like. I took the PyTest benchmark uh, package, which is, which is a pure Python package, which was not available in the official Conda channels when I prepared these slides uh, an hour ago. So I just made with Conda Skeleton a Conda package uh, from the package that you can find on PyP. And here, here you can find the, the name, the version, some dependencies which are not a lot. And on the other hand, you have the build scripts, which in this case just boil down to Python setup.py install. And that's it. This is the way in which you would install the software if you were in a shell or something like that. The thing is that, well, and for Windows, it's exactly the same thing. The thing is that Conda build, when it's creating the package, it first downloads all the sources, then applies the patches if we specified any, then install the build dependencies in a separate Conda environment, and then runs the build script at the same way, the same way in which we would do from the shell packages the new files, and then tests all the, the tests that we shipped with the package um, with the result that, that it had. So this looks like a very legit process on how to prepare a package, right? Because first, you, you want to isolate how you are building it. Uh, second, it's important also to test it just to make sure before you are shipping that all your tests run. Like, we already do this with other tools, like we use stocks or we use continuous integration or whatever. But here, the whole process of building the package takes into account all these steps, and I think that is very positive. So in the end, if you do a uh, Conda build PyTest benchmark, uh, and you specify here the Python version, but in this case, it's not very important, uh, well, it just runs these steps that I told you before. And at the end, we have uh, a tar, which is just a package with the internal binary format that Conda manages. And well, it has uh, a naming convention which takes into account the Python version, uh, the version of the package, the build number, which is also important because um, 
contrary to what PyPy does, for instance, here you can uh, take into account that you have one version of the package, but you might need to build uh, it uh, in the future because there were some problems with the packaging and you know, stuff like that. And the good thing is that right after you build the package, you can use Conda install using this flag, use local here, to install that package that you've just built. So as you can see, this is a very, uh, let's say, simple way to translate a package that is available on PyPy. Um, any, any package would work. And then having it available on, on Conda. So it's um, a way to have it available in a quick way before the, there is, it's available in a different channel or in the official channels or whatever. This Conda skeleton thing that we did in the, at the beginning, that first creates the receipt, mostly works. Like I would say it works with 80% of the simple Python packages, but I don't think it works with all of them. And uh, sometimes you need to make some tweaks to the resulting files, but most of it, uh, it's working. Well, and now that we have this uh, process to build and create the packages, then there, there's also Anaconda Cloud, which is a repository analogous to PyPay to upload all these packages that we are creating. In this case, I'm, um, I'm showing a screenshot of my own profile in Anaconda Cloud, and you can see that I have a, a quite a few packages uploaded there. And not only we can build these packages locally, but also we have a continuous integration service uh, provided by the Anaconda folks too, which serves uh, as a way to upload the package, tests, uh, make all the tests, and automatically, if we, if we decide to do so, to upload the package to our contact channels. And when you finish doing this, uh, well, I'm uninstalling the, the package that I just installed locally to try, um, ah, no, sorry, before that. Um, to upload the packages to Anaconda Cloud, first you have to install the Anaconda client, and you just specify the name of the package. I don't think you can see the whole command here. Well, anyway, uh, you have to specify there the, um, the whole path, and also optionally what user are you allowing to, and stuff like that. And then when you finish that, well, I, as I told you before, I uh, was removing the package that I, that I installed previously. And now, specifying the channel, which in this case is the, my account name, then you can install the package immediately. Not only you, but anybody that you can tell about. OK, so this is the very basics of how to build a Conda package. But here there are some more advanced tricks that we can use to um, build some more complex packages, and in particular, uh, to run the tests, we can provide a, any combination of these files. We can provide a Python script, a shell script, uh, even a, a Perl script, as I can see there. And actually, this is not limited, as you can imagine, to Python tests, because here I'm taking a run test script from a project that I'm working on. And actually, here you can say that I'm building some tests with CMake and I'm just uh, performing a make operation. So as you can see here, this is not limited to, to Python. And this is one of the uh, big advantages of Conda 2, that you are not limited to Python packages. Also, if you are working only with Python, the good thing is that you are not worried anymore about uh, cross-platform issues, portability, and stuff like that. So you can use Conda Convert to upload uh, packages for all the operative systems. And in particular, if you um, if you perform this command over here and specify, specify that you want to convert to all the platforms, then you can upload uh, this PyTest uh, benchmark Conda package available for all the operating systems that are currently supported by Anaconda. I'm going a bit fast, I think. I will have a lot of time for questions. Well, and also you can specify some platform-specific data. In this case, using some form of tags in the YAML file. For instance, I'm taking some meta YAML from a pure C or C++ package. And you can see that, for instance, if you want to make this package work on Windows, then you have to provide in some way the, the Visual Studio runtime and stuff like that. 
and as the Python versions are compiled, each one with a different Visual Studio compiler, then here you can choose which environment are you shipping with each of the versions. And of course, you can also say, OK, um, for Linux and OS X, for instance, I want to ship an additional uh, library, which is only necessary in these platforms. And not only you can do this, but also uh, these metadata files support templating using Jinja2. So for instance, you can take the version number from a continuous integration service, or you can uh, use uh, environment variables, uh, do some kind of logic inside of the metadata, and stuff like that. So this allows for a lot of possibilities when, when trying to take into account all the possibilities to, to build the package. Well, and uh, one very special bit that I want to highlight is that working with other languages, in principle, is no different than working with Python. And in fact, we can even use it as a, as a cross-platform package manager. There are already, well, every Linux distribution ships with their own package manager. Also, there are some attempts to do that on Windows that are going very well. But as you are not limited to Python with Conda, and actually now they're using it to ship GCC and many C core libraries and stuff like that, then you can use it to distribute packages in all the platforms. The, the only thing that we have to take into account is that we don't need to specify Python as a build dependency. Apart from that, it's no different. Also, they are using it to ship some R packages. For instance, here is the build script for another package that I've been mentioning before. And as you can see, there is no, no Python here. Uh, for instance, there's another possibility that you can use uh, Python these utils to compile a C, uh, a C extension instead of using a make file, for instance. But then in this case, you, ought to, you just need to specify Python as a build dependency, but not as a run dependency. This sounds very easy, but in the end, it's not, because all the burden is in you. And what I mean here is that uh, Conda Build is not uh, a tool meant to solve all our problems. And in particular, it does not solve, for instance, cross-compiling. So if you want to provide compiled packages in Linux, Windows, and, and Mac, you have to compile it yourself uh, in each of the platforms. On the other hand, this is not only a matter of cross um, operative system compatibility, but also cross Linux compatibility, because we already know that the situation in the Linux world is a bit chaotic too, a bit messy. And actually, there are many sources of incompatibility among uh, Linux distributions. The good thing is that um, I will mention at the end of the talk that these, these sources of incompatibility are very uh, well identified. So if we take the necessary precautions when building the Conda package, we can more or less uh, uh, get along. In particular, building in a clean operating system, like using a continuous integration service or something like that, it's very important because we tend to have a lot of system libraries installed with the system package manager, and they disturb the, the build the build process, because something that uh, managed to compile in one computer, for instance, uh, if it uses dynamic linking, which is the case for, for most of the packages, that is not possible anymore to run in a different Linux distribution, which doesn't have these, these libraries. And the, again, the good thing is that, uh, in principle, the, the core libraries of Linux have a very strict backwards compatibility policies. So for instance, if you manage to compile any package in a very old Linux distribution with like CentOS 5 or a very old like Ubuntu 10 or something, then more or less it's guaranteed that it will work in, in all future versions. And also there's, there are other problems that also fall in the land of the packets themselves. Because uh, sometimes the build process or the process of looking for the libraries is not very smart. 
And for example, I've found in the past a lot of packages that hard code all the paths uh, or some of the paths of the libraries that they need. And in these cases, the build will for sure fail because Asconda is creating a new environment to make all the compilation process. If this assumes that you have to find some library in the root locations, then it's not going to work. And actually, not only is it not going to work in your computer, but also if you try to make that package uh, work in another system, then it's not going to work either because it's not going to find the library. So this is a source of problems that you have to either tune very carefully the compilation options or just patch the package and inform the maintainers. In general, the advice from this slide is that if the, reci if the recipe builds in a clean, uh, headless, because the graphical library is also disturb a little bit the process, and a quite old Linux distribution, then it's going to build everywhere. But yes, this have the, we have to care, take some care with this process. Well, and this is all about um, how to build the Conda packages. And now I'm going to mention very briefly the Conda Forge initiative that Christine already uh, talked about in her talk. Um, as you know, there is one authoritative uh, source of Conda packages, which is a Continuum, that they have the official channels. And also, as I explained before, you can create your own channels. But for instance, for the core packages, uh, most of the recipes are not public. So you don't know, for instance, how do they build NumPy or how do they build Matplotlib, uh, some very uh, core packages. And in general, having a community initiative in this respect is very important because then, uh, well, it's very easy to control the tools that the Continuum gave us in this case because they are uh, licensed with a very permissive uh, license without any burden. But yeah, at some point, we have to take uh, care of the process. And in particular, this Conda Forge initiative is very, is very powerful because they are combining the Conda packages with many free um, continuous integration services that work in Windows, Linux, and OS X. So in the end, the process looks like uh, you upload a Conda recipe, which is uh, um, as any Conda recipe that you can find anywhere. And the system automatically uh, corrects some, some quirks and builds it in many continuous integration services. And if everything is fine, then it's uploaded automatically in the Conda Forge uh, Anaconda channel. So it's very, very useful to have all these community packages uploaded in one central channel because of one of the limitations that I will mention after that. And in general, it's very good to, to ensure that your packaging runs everywhere. Well, and if you decide not to, if you, for example, if you do not support Windows or something, then it also shows in the build matrix that your package does not run on Windows. And they also have the very high uh, quality standards, so it's an initiative worth checking. Um, and this is uh, the, I'm approaching the end of the talk. I wanted to talk about some limitations that I found while working with Conda Build. Uh, these are very young tools because Conda, for instance, I think it was um, released in 2012, maybe more or less. And Conda Build, I saw the first article in the Continuum blog in 2013. So you think about that, you, uh, it's only been like three or four years since we've been having this. And they still have some problems, but they are working on it, but they can be a part and to work on some things. Specifically, specifically, they are already shipping versions of the G of the C compiler, the GNU compilers, and the libg Fortran, for instance. But they are having many compatibility issues because of the versions and because it's not easy, apparently, to ship a portable build of the GCC. So, Right now, it's, uh, it's mostly working, but again, it's giving some problems. Then you, if you download the slides, which are already uploaded in GitHub, you can find some links. Some links. Uh, the other thing is that in the meta file, where you specify all the dependencies, there is no way to say, OK, this dependency is going to be in this channel. 
and that is a problem because uh, in the end, it makes you have to upload all your dependencies. Either wait for the Continuum guys to upload them to the official channels or upload them to your own channel, and this can be a burden too. This is why having this Condaforge channel is very good, because you have one channel with all the community packages built. And also, I'm providing a link to here. Pinning the NumPy version is very special and can be a bit messy because uh, NumPy defines a lot of, of properties of the behavior of the packages, and it's taken in a, as a particular case. And from my point of view, it's still not handled very, very clearly and not very well documented. So this, this feature is likely to evolve in the future. And also, I've been talking all the time about the, the Conda packages, but um, as you already know, there are many initiatives in the core, the core Python community to provide waves to distribute packages and stuff like that. In the past, uh, they were not very useful to solve the problems that we had as a scientific community, but they are making very good progress in, the, in recent years. Specifically, uh, well, PIP already catches uh, wheels locally, so for instance, what tended to happen when I started developing in Python is that every single time that I pip install NumPy, it compiles on my system, and I got sick of that, and that's why I'm using Conda since the very beginning. But now this does not happen anymore because you compile it once or you download a wheel and that's it. The other thing is that Windows and OS X uh, wheels are already very, very popular and everybody is distributing them, so there's no problem there. And finally, you remember that you cannot upload uh, Linux wheels on Pipe because it's not clear if they're going to work on all the distributions and so on, as we've been already talking about. And now they found a way to okay, isolate some of the causes that might um, make these packages not work very well across Linux distributions. And now they created the many Linux, I don't know if I'm mentioning it here. Well, this pep over here defines uh, the many Linux tag, which is um, some kind of a process to provide a, a will that works in many Linux distributions, taking some, um, some special care. And as a last um, bit of information, they are also trying to get rid of this, this util set of tools mess that is being irking us so, for so long. And they're trying to decouple the build system from the installation system. So they are making slow progress because uh, they have to reach the agreement of the whole community, and it's normal that it's slower, but they're making good progress, and I think there will be some changes in the future. Maybe when we drop Python 2, who knows. Still, there are some quirks. For instance, the pip doesn't have a dependency solver, so you can end up with a lot of funny situations. Um, and Conda build, for me, has a more streamlined process of building the package, then testing, then uploading in everything in a single tool. So for me, it's more useful in the end follow my advice and keep calm and conda install. And that's it. You can find these slides uh, on GitHub already. Uh, you can find my profile here. Uh, you can find me on Twitter or on many accounts on Twitter because I handle too many already. And please approach me during the conference. Even if you don't know me, please don't be shy to say me hello. Uh, please. Talk me, uh, speak to me about your projects, your ideas. I will be glad to uh, to share and to to know about what you are doing. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? I have a question. How do you think that? Conda needs to be an alternative to any other packaging system that now everyone's using. I mean, setup tools. I mean, there's something there that hmm. it isn't. Well, the thing is that Conda is not really an alternative, and that's not intended to do be because in the end, as you saw, you are using uh, setup.py install, so you are relying on the underlying implementation of the installing scripts. They are actually more like a way to provide simple binary packages and a way to automate a bit the process. But 
that's that's what I mean. I mean, it's built on top of something that is kind of broken. Yeah. Well, the thing is that they are relying in some way uh, on the core Python community to fix those problems. But in principle, if they, for example, if they maintain all the APIs and they uh, separate pip and these utils, for instance, without breaking too much things, in principle, it's going to work. But yes, right now, it's like a layer on top of something that is broken that works. So is there any way to, to specify a series of packages version to build the same package for account for different versions of NumPy or SciPy? Because for example, I use Docs for, to build a, um, a version of an open source package to, to support different, different NumPy versions, different secular versions. So can yes. you do this with Conda packages? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think it was briefly showcased in one of these slides. When you when you are doing the conda build step, mm, yeah, I'm getting there. Yes, there you specify the Python version, so you can uh, specify not only the Python version you can uh, use three five three four and stuff, but also specify the non version. And actually, if you specify the non version, uh, it's also um, highlighted there in the name of the package. I don't know if it answers your question. Okay. More questions? We still have time for questions. Okay, if there are no questions. Let's thank Juan Luis again. <laughs> <laughs>